Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be digging through parcels which have arrived at the P.O. box over the last couple months. There's quite a few to get through, so I'm going to dig right into this one here. It comes from a guy named Kurtz in PA. Let's see what he sent. I wonder what the heck this is. A scale train's rivet counter? Are you serious? Oh my goodness. I just quickly uh, double check the box. I don't see any letter inside, so let's just dig into this. It appears to be a BNSF Gvo. It's got the H3 paint scheme. Let's take it out of the box here. Oh, here we go. Now you have one from Minty Mountain. Well, let's uh, have a look. <laughs> What an awesome looking locomotive. I can't believe somebody would send something like this. This is just insane. There have been some nice things sent into the uh, channel before, but uh, yeah, this has got to be one of the best. It's just gorgeous. And I mean, the detail on this thing, as you'd expect from a Scale Trains product, is just terrific. What an incredible gift. Well, I certainly can't wait to run this, but there are still quite a few parcels to open up. So let's get into those and we'll uh, check this thing out later. This next parcel comes in from a guy named Patrick, who's from Connecticut. Oh, it's like Christmas time here. Dear SMT, here are some N-Scale train cars for you. Thank you so much for bringing me back into the hobby. Congrats on 100k. Sincerely, Patrick. Thank you so much, Patrick. And it appears we've got a Bachman Atchison Topeka Santa Fe caboose and a Great Northern boxcar. And uh, that looks pretty sharp. We'll definitely have to try those out on the N-Scale layout later. And then we have a box from a guy named Robert who comes from the Garden State. Let's crack this one open. Read me first. Well, I feel like I kind of uh, botched opening this one up. We got a sticker which looks like it was stuck to a note, but uh, I can't see it anywhere, so I think I'm missing something. Anyways, we'll dig in here and uh, hopefully it is amongst all this stuff. Delta Lines boxcar, I haven't heard of that railroad before. Titchy Train Group Crane. Oh, this was stuck to that at some point. Well, maybe this has our story. Then we got an old uh, Aristocraft pamphlet for one of the locomotives, which I believe is in here. And some kind of really unique looking truck. Now, I notice this flash drive is labeled box two, so I'm not sure if maybe there is a second box, which might explain some of this, but uh, this looks really cool. Let's continue digging in. So there's the brass caboose, as mentioned. <laughs> just look at that. I believe this hole right here might be so you can actually adjust it. I'll have to uh, see about that. Oh, wow, look at that. It's an old uh, Proto 2000 locomotive. It looks to be uh, overall in pretty good shape. That window could definitely use some work, but uh, yeah, what an awesome box. Thank you so much for the uh, projects, Robert. Those look like uh, a lot of fun. Anyways, moving on to the next box. This one comes from a train store actually called Otter Valley Railroad. Now I've uh, done some business with them before, but uh, this was not something I ordered. So I think it must be uh, a gift of some kind. Happy holidays. Well, there's no note, but I pulled out an invoice and it has a name, David Z to G scale, so uh, I think I know where this came from. Anyways, got a Athern ready to roll Ford from 1955. It's got my name on it. I think it has to do with uh, Harrison's Hardware, which is a store I actually already have on the layout. What a nifty thing. I didn't know they made a uh, matching vehicle. And then there's this huge uh, snowplow trade of some kind from the uh, Alaska Railroad. Look at all those uh, teeth on the front of it. Yeah, look at that. It's an old uh, rotary snowplow. I've seen uh, a couple of these things in person. Uh, very cool, but uh, I've always found the front a little bit terrifying. I'd uh, certainly never want to meet one on a hike through the forest. And it's uh, got a powered B unit as well. Look at that. All Athern. What a beauty. Well, thank you so much, David. I really can't wait to uh, test this thing out later. I think that that's going to be really cool. I don't have a whole lot from the Alaska Railroad either, so uh, it's a very unique piece. 
This next parcel comes from a guy named Andrew who's from Cambridge. Dear Harrison, my name is Andrew Raposo and I am from Cambridge, Ontario, just a few hours away. I'm a big fan of your channel and I try to watch it as many times a day as I can. My favorite railroad videos are the ones that you have fixed junk models to working order, as well as the unboxing videos as you never know what you're going to get, that is very true. Some of these may need restoring, so feel free to turn it into a project for YouTube. Hope you enjoy the parcel, Andrew. P.S. Sorry for my poor writing. I don't write handwritten letters. Uh, no judgment there. I'm uh, exactly the same way, but uh, thank you so much for sending this. Let's uh, dig into it. Oh, here's a uh, familiar one. It's funny, I got one of these exact locomotives as a uh, kid as well. A couple of uh, 80s Amtrak passenger cars. A lot of people have wanted me to uh, get these kinds of cars for a while now, and uh, here they are. They look to be in uh, great shape too. Knuckle couplers and uh, interior lighting. Something from uh, Bachman Spectrum. It's a uh, matching locomotive to go with them. Nice. Got one of your uh, classic Bachman Canadian Pacific locomotives with the uh, four wheel drive. And then finally, I think this might be a steam locomotive. Oh, yeah. A Mantua Tyco Crescent Limited. I don't know if I've seen one in this exact paint scheme before. Looks to be in pretty good shape too. Well, thank you so much, uh, Andrew. I really can't wait to uh, test all this stuff out. But there are a few more parcels to open up. And then we got another parcel from uh, Robert from New Jersey. I think this is part one to the other one we opened earlier. And uh, I guess I should have opened them in order, but I didn't know which was which. Oh yeah, here's your uh, classic Ravel station. Look at all the uh, details on this. It looks like that suffered a little bit of damage in transit. Nothing a bit of uh, CA can't fix. It's one of these uh, versatile tools. Ah, <laughs> yeah it is, look at that. Okay, I, I don't know if that part's supposed to come off. Got your uh, steampunk starter pack. Is this some sort of uh, deer hunting station? And I think that that is everything. Uh, thank you so much, Robert. I really can't wait to uh, put together some of these kits and fix up a few of these buildings here too. Next, we got a parcel from a guy named John, who's also from the Garden State. This looks like some things which might have had a bit of a rough go in transit here. This one didn't have a letter. There was another piece of paper with a phone number on it, but uh, there wasn't anything else. We'll have a quick look through uh, everything anyway. Got some kind of a B unit. Got a Roco Pennsylvania C liner. And another one just in a slightly different paint scheme. And a Walters seafood box car. Well, thanks a bunch, John. Uh, maybe I'll contact that number and figure out what the story behind this stuff is, but uh, it looks pretty nice. Here's a parcel from somebody in Mississippi, and their name's James. Merry Christmas, Harrison. Congratulations on a big year. 100,000 subscribers and the only Hershey factory. To celebrate Christmas and your achievements, I'm sending you some model train related items. Most of the stuff I got at a small train store in a rural town called Geneseo, Illinois. In my opinion, the best modern train store I know. Small but mighty, I'd say. Anyway, hopefully you enjoy all of it and put it to good use. Looking forward to the upcoming content and more. P.S. Give Nerf Cat a boop on the nose for me. Controller Packers. Well, wow. thank you so much, uh, Controller Packers. Let's uh, have a look through here. Ooh, micro trains, Illinois Gulf uh, gondolas. Those look beautiful. Something from Bowser. I think this uh, unfortunately got loosen the box. This doesn't look uh, super promising right here. It looks like one of the gears actually blew right out through the bottom of the gearbox. That's really unfortunate, but uh, I mean this entire channel is about fixing trains, so nothing uh, I'm sure that can't be uh, fixed up. This is a beautiful locomotive though. I mean, look at it. 
Oh, it's a classic Rock Island locomotive. I've always loved the uh, Rock's 1970s era paint schemes. They really were just beautiful. Too bad that the railroad didn't succeed, although I believe somebody has reopened the Rock and they have one with this uh, exact paint scheme. You got the good old Milwaukee Road from Walter's Main Line. This is a nifty uh, N-scale station too. Apparently it's got interior lighting. That's gonna be a uh, welcome addition to the N-scale layout. More Bowser stuff. Oh, nice. It's a Rock Island uh, switcher. That looks really nice. I don't own a crazy amount of Bowser stuff, but every Bowser piece I have had has been uh, you know, very good in terms of running quality, and I have no doubt that this will be any different. So thank you so much, Controller Packers. I really uh, can't wait to uh, test all this stuff out. It looks like a ton of fun, and uh, I'm sure it won't be too tricky to get that Bowser engine going, too. I'm certainly determined to fix her up. And yeah, next up, we got this little box from Arkansas from a guy named Jackson. Let's open it up and have a look here. Dear SMT, I wanted to send you this because I figured I don't use it, so you could probably use this from Jackson. All right, let's have a look. It's a nifty little uh, N-scale uh, dummy unit of some kind. Doesn't have a brand on it. I'm guessing it's a Bachman, but I can't entirely be sure. But uh, thank you so much, Jackson. And then we've got this kind of unusual looking parcel from somebody named Brent. I haven't seen one that uh, opens like this before. Dear Harrison, greetings from North Dakota. I really like your videos and find them informative and entertaining. My first HO scale train set was a Life Like Campbell soup set. I still have it. From that point on, I tried to get anything food related, but I also love the Sioux line in Great Northern. Your Santa Fe super long chief locomotive inspired me to come up with a car to be pulled by it. It seems to pull on my layout until trees or buildings get in the way. No scenery would be fun to see them run. I'm also sending you an odd Lionel piece and parts I got from a box of train stuff. Maybe there are some parts you can use in a rebuild. P.S. I would like to shout out Ron Classic Model Trains. I like that channel too. That guy is uh, super funny. Sincerely, Brent. So I guess we'll just dig in here through this kind of precarious looking wire. Wow, no kidding. That is an unusual piece of railroad equipment. This, this must have been some sort of a piece you could activate. <laughs> and uh, here's the last thing for the uh, super, super chief. <laughs> Looks like I'll uh, have to get the wheels back on there, but uh, yeah, what what an awesome piece of rolling stock. I can't wait to uh, test this out on the uh, layout. Terrific work with the uh, decals too. It looks really nice. Thank you so much, Brent. Now this next parcel is uh, something I kind of opened up already by accident. It was in an Amazon bag and I was a bit confused because I don't usually send Amazon parcels to my P.O. box, but I figured I had accidentally had something shipped there. But I opened it up and when I did, I found this note inside and uh, I got a bit of a chuckle out of this. Enjoy your gift. Not a great iron, but it should do better than that monster you've been using. Now uh, just to specify what the uh, monster is, let me just uh, show you something quickly. So this is the one and uh, I can't tell you how many comments I get from people uh, suggesting that I should get rid of it. It's 100 watts, which for certain applications is really bad, but uh, I personally love this thing. I just think that, uh, you know, it's nice. It heats up almost instantly, and then when your hand's off the trigger, you know, there's no heat going there, so it's just uh, a little bit safer in that regard, and you can just lie it down on its back. This is my other soldering iron, and uh, I do have another attachment, which is not this uh, hazardous piece. And um, I've never been a big fan of it, honestly, just because, you know, it kind of rolls around, so it could, you know, roll into this box and start a fire, or fall off the table into my lap, and it's just always going. So, you know, if we're working on a circuit board or something like that, you know, a lower wattage one like this is definitely better, but for uh, mainstream applications, uh, this has always been my go-to. But having said that, I'm willing to give this thing a try because I'm sure for uh, certain applications this is probably a much more precise product than uh, this unit. Anyways, let's have a closer look at it. It does look pretty nice. We've even got some heat adjustments, which is something the other doesn't have. I'm not quite sure what that is for. We've even got some flux and some various bits. 
So thanks for the uh, new iron, uh, Ernest Pike. Yeah, now we got a box from somebody named Daryl. This comes from Ontario. Dear Harrison, I'm sending you this gift box with a couple of diesels and a spare man to a tender plus some spare parts, some Lionel and others. Also enclosed are some tools for your workbench, a flex drive so you can drill out the rivets, etc. Should you decide to repair or build yourself a steam engine, plus a side rod wrench. A Riverossi unit, I know nothing about it as it came in a parts box I bought on eBay and it is of no use to me so I thought maybe you could use it for parts. The Taiko E7 parts are brand new and never been on the rails. I bought the unit for a body to put on a model power slash Roco drive, keeping with the rest of my line of engines. I enjoy watching your show very much, I must say, you seem to get them all running. I like restoring the older engines myself, both steam and diesels. Mind you, the diesels all get newer Atlas slash model power Roco drives. They are pretty solid ones. I've been finding a lot of older River Aussie steam engines suffer from drive wheel problems, broken drive wheels, etc. As for the Bachman, most of the ones I get in parts boxes I buy on eBay have drive wheels out of quarter, etc. I put my daylight shell on a Bowser drive and it worked out perfectly and made a nice locomotive once again. I need to get the rest of my railway equipment down to Ontario from BC, then I'll have lots of spare parts to swap once again, right now limited supplies, just building them up from down here. Cheers. The Grand Pacific Western Railway, Daryl Smith. Well, thank you so much for uh, sending in all these parts. I think that this will probably turn out to be very helpful. I got some uh, various truck covers. Uh, there's definitely some golden pieces in there. Got a chassis for something. Some lifelike parts. Here are the uh, Tyco drives as mentioned. It's a nifty little uh, signal post. And Pacific Tender. Oh, it's a, uh, a lifelike proto. That looks pretty sharp. Looks like a uh, drill extension tool. River Rossi uh, Burlington locomotive. Unfortunately, it appears to have zinc pests, so I'm not sure how things on the inside are gonna be looking, but I'd be very curious to see uh, if it works. That, sh that should be fine. Bachman gears, those can always come in handy. Well, thanks a bunch, Daryl. I think all these pieces are going to turn out to be very handy. Here's another box from uh, Robert. Yeah, so this appears to be the uh, first box, which I didn't open in order. But anyways, here's a uh, complete description of all the items inside here. We've even got a vintage ad, and uh, this is just so timely with uh, fixing up the Hiawatha. What a time it must have been when they were making all this stuff. Well, it's an Aristocraft. Aristocraft is one of the few brands I don't ever recall uh, working on. A bunch of uh, wooden gears which were mentioned earlier, and uh, I think that this is a little baby ultrasonic parts cleaner. Isn't that nifty? Wow, it's an unopened uh, Revell kit from probably about the 50s. Well, isn't that just awesome? Now this is almost all the boxes which I intended to open up in this video. There are still a few more waiting which I'm going to include in a future video. But there's one more big one which I've been waiting to open up for an awful long time now. And I think today's the day so let's uh, get into it. And here it is. Quite possibly the largest box that's ever been sent into the channel before. And I don't have a clue what's inside. Let's find out. SMT Mainline, I've been a subscriber for a couple years and I love your videos. I decided to send you some things that were just sitting around. Hope you can find use for them. Best wishes to you and your family and Canada. Scott. All right, well, let's dig in here. Got some handrails. This one's full of decal kits. Oh yeah, look at that, that's cool. It's a uh, tin uh, Tyco ad. 1982 called. They said I could keep the books. Look at how awesome these uh, ads are. Tyco, bunch of Tyco stuff. The layouts that they had as suggestions were just so cool too. This is uh, one of the few Tyco steam engines I don't have as a complete locomotive. And uh, this one looks to be in uh, great shape too. Oh yeah, look at that. It's got the Spirit of 76 on it. 
Oh, we got something from uh, one of my favorite brands, Lifelike. And this appears to be a complete catalog. I, I think it's sealed too. An old uh, ad from another brand I like, Athern. Plasticville set. And even a little uh, trolley. These are a bunch of uh, band drive engines. There's the uh, F unit which goes with that. Oh, another one. Tyco 50th anniversary boxcar. I'll be honest, I didn't even know they ever made these. Looks to be in uh, terrific shape too. Just look at that. Wow, a die-cast uh, Santa Fe caboose. It's pretty sharp looking uh, Santa Fe GP35 by Cato. More couplers. <laughs> Look at this, a little Rock Island uh, N-scale engine by Bachman. And even a Bachman uh, Spectrum maybe Southern Pacific set. Beautiful uh, Mantua Tyco steam locomotive, and it almost looks brand new, hardly anywhere on the wheels. I think this might be a final run Tyco Chattanooga, because I heard that in the very last year production, they were actually rebadged Mahano locomotives, and uh, this would appear to be one of them. Got a... Bachman FT, a Tyco Chassis System Century 630, one by AHM, and then a matching dummy unit, a New Haven boxcar, and a switcher locomotive. Well, that was uh, quite the box to dig through. Thank you so much, Scott. That's just uh, really nice things to send somebody. Now, uh, that's going to be it for the boxes today. I'm going to organize everything, and we'll uh, test it all out. It's now a while later, and I've got everything organized to some extent. Most of the things on this side of the table are brand new, and I'm pretty confident they'll fire up on the first try. Then in the middle here are some of the things which may or may not start. And then towards the end, there are the dummy locomotives and some of the band drive engines. Over on the layout itself, we got three different trains. This one's made up of knuckle coupler cars. Next one's got kind of older style cars with the horn hooks. Got the Amtrak passenger train. And then over at the end scale layout, it's kind of hard to see, but I've got all the end scale stuff ready to go. So we'll try that out later. But for the time being, let's start testing out some of the HO stuff, starting with the BNSF Jeevo. I'm so excited to try running this thing for the first time. It's just uh, such a nice looking locomotive. Anyway, let's give it some power. And it's smooth as silk. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. It's got a pretty good top end speed too. I really wouldn't expect that for a rivet counter. What an awesome locomotive. That is just great. Let's uh, test out some of the other ones now. Next up, we got the GP9 from Proto 2000. Really quite a sharp locomotive, although I think it did incur a little bit of damage during shipping. Yeah, there we go. I think this one might have sat for a little while. It doesn't run too bad. I think it maybe could use a bit of a tune-up, but uh, certainly uh, not a bad start there. Now I got the Rock Island locomotive. This is another one which I'm really excited to see start for the first time. Oh, it's perfect. As most Atlas locomotive has, it's got super bright number boards and a headlight. It seems to run very smooth. I think it could use a little bit of braking in. The rear truck's making a little bit of a humming noise, but uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, put lots of hours on this locomotive. Next up, we got the Bowser Sioux Line locomotive. Now, I did a bit of a quick repair. I got the tank glued back on there, and I also tried to put the gearbox back together. I didn't open it up or test it, so I really don't know how this is going to work out, but... I'll try to run it anyways, see, hopefully the gearbox survived. It's gonna be a real moment of truth here. Well, it's sound equipped.
<laughs> Seems to run just fine. Well, I'm highly impressed. I really thought that that was going to have some issues. I'm still going to open this up at some point and have a bit of a gander through the gearbox and see if I can fix up or replace this cover. But uh, considering what this thing presumably went through, I think it's uh, impressive that it started like nothing happened. Now I've got the uh, Santa Fe uh, GP35. I suspect this one's going to be very smooth. Yep, beautiful. Seems about right on the money to me. Rock Island switcher. Well, that one didn't hesitate. Well, that one's got uh, more than enough gusto. All right, I think we'll start to move on to uh, some of the older locomotives here. We'll start with this uh, Canadian Pacific unit. I feel like this one is gonna go. Yep. Oh, it's trying. Yeah, this thing runs fine. It just needed some voltage to wake it up. Okay, so it might be in need of a bit of a wheel cleaning, but also a pretty good runner. I feel like this one has got a pretty good chance. These Mantua Tycos are fairly tough. Amazing, this thing might have been sitting in storage for a while and uh, you can see it's starting to break through it. Got the Tyco uh, chassis system Century 630 with the power torque motor. And it seems to run. It's got a bit of that kind of funny uh, Jetson sound that some of these make, but uh, it's going. Tyco Clementine with the power tender. This one seems to run pretty well, although it sounds like it needs, well, it definitely does need a traction tire. This one looks to be in pretty good shape. I feel like it's gonna go. Oh, it's mint. Here we've got the Tyco, which I think is a rebadged Mahano. These are well-made locomotives, by the way, so really no surprise there. Yeah, it's perfect. And then this is your kind of conventional Chattanooga choo-choo and it's got a power torque so I wouldn't expect it to be great if it does run but we'll try it. It's definitely picking up power but it uh, doesn't want to go. Got the AHM Sentry 430. If we're gonna try to run this thing too. We're gonna do it right here. I think we might need to add some weights to that one. Another power torque Tyco Chattanooga. I'm not so sure about this one. The valve gear is kind of doing the live long and prosper, so that's definitely going to be an issue if the motor tries to get it to move. In fact, that's kind of come out of place. Let's try to test out the motor quickly. Yeah, it's no problem. It doesn't run anyway. And here's one I'm really excited about. It's the whole snowplow set. Let's see if it will do anything. No way, it's got operating blades. Look at that. Okay, this thing just became like 10 times cooler. That is awesome. Got the shark nose with the Roco drive. These tend to be pretty tough locomotives. I think it's gonna run. Well, this thing seems to run pretty well despite being squatted and uh, with a light which flickers a little bit every so often. But yeah, it's a runner. Here we got the River Rossi, which looks like it might have a bit of a problem. Doesn't mean it won't run though. Okay, the motor's still good. That's uh, not too surprising. River Rossi's have very good motors, but uh, yeah, in terms of running, I think unfortunately the Zinc Pest has got the better of this one. Got the Amtrak. If this thing starts, I'll uh, use it to pull those cars. Hmm. 
So it's running, but it's definitely missing a drive shaft. Only one of those trucks is activating. I did notice it actually has uh, working lights on the top too, which flash, so that's kind of a cool feature. This is actually a DCC equipped locomotive, so it should have directional lighting. I'm just gonna run it on DC quickly to test it. Hmm, probably just needs a bit of a wheel cleaning, but uh, yeah, something's not quite right there. We got the uh, other Roco Pennsylvania Railroad engine. That one runs really well. Well, now it's on to some of the band drive engines. These are not going to move, but the motors might start, which is really what I'm curious to see. As for this one, nothing. See, maybe this one will be the lucky one. It's got good bands, it might just go, you know? Well, I thought it had good bands, maybe not. I'll call that a runner, but uh, it's gonna need some work. Not so sure about this one. It's actually still got bits of the band kind of fused to it, so. Nothing. Ah, this one runs. Yeah, that one's really good. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. Now for the two new havens. Now this one's just a dummy, but I'll put it on for uh, cosmetic purposes. As for this, sounds like it's got a pretty healthy motor, but only uh, two bands, which are in pretty bad shape, are hanging in there. So it's going to need a little bit of work. All right, so moving on to the end scale stuff. First of all, I'd like to uh, add this building to the layout. And I personally think this maybe here would be uh, a good location. I'll have to wire it up at some point so I can actually get the lighting going, but uh, I think this looks quite nice here. Now as for testing things out, we got uh, three different locomotives to test out. Of course, there's also the dummy engine and I threw both the uh, gondola cars behind it. Now I didn't notice this when I first opened it up, but you can see on the side of this car it actually says Hanover Hiroshima. And uh, I guess this car was uh, sent to Japan from Hanover, Germany in 1989 because the uh, two cities were twinned and I guess a lot of these exact cars were sent over earlier to uh, help rebuild Hiroshima. So it's just some uh, history which uh, I wasn't aware of, so just something I thought I'd share. Anyways, we'll set this one up and uh, see if it will run. Yeah, it runs pretty well. Not bad at all. Let's try out the uh, Southern Pacific now. Yeah, that runs just fine. Just needs a little more power than I'd expect. Maybe it needs a bit of oil. What the heck? <laughs> For a second, I, I didn't understand that. Uh, that's funny. Anyways, we'll uh, try the Rock Island engine out next. It runs. It's very slow, though. Yeah, that one's definitely going to need a bit of a tune-up. I mean, it's uh, it's running consistently. It doesn't have any electrical issues, but for the amount of voltage I'm giving this, uh, it should just be flying around the layout. So that's going to need some work. Now, there are a few uh, trains I want to run with uh, some of the various locomotives that were uh, sent in.
Well, what an awesome collection of new train stuff. I really am just once again blown away by everyone's generosity, and there's a lot of you out there that I want to thank, so we'll get to that right now. Starting with uh, Minty Mountain, thank you so much for sending this rockin', you know, BNSF H3 Scale Trains locomotive. I know they're not exactly giving these things away, and uh, it's just so cool, so thank you so much for that. It's just a ridiculously generous gift. Uh, next, I want to thank uh, Patrick for the hen scale cars. They uh, look really nice behind those locomotives, and I had fun running them. After that, I want to thank uh, Robert for all the different kits, buildings, and locomotives that he sent in. That stuff will certainly not go to waste. There's a lot of fun projects in there, which I really can't wait to dig into. Then I'd like to uh, thank David Z to G Scale for the rotary snowplow and truck. Uh, both a couple of really cool pieces, and uh, I'm just so fascinated watching this thing going around the layout. I wasn't aware they made one of these with a working uh, rotary plow. It's really interesting, so thanks a bunch for that. And I want to thank uh, John for the various Roco locomotives which are amongst here. They're uh, really nice and they uh, seem to run pretty well, so uh, huge thanks for that. I'll uh, do some work on some of them and see if I can get them running even better than they already are. And I'd like to give a thanks to uh, Andrew for the two Amtrak passenger cars and the uh, Bachman locomotives. I think it won't take too much to get them running well again, so huge thanks for those. Huge thanks goes out to Jackson for the dummy locomotive. I'd like to thank uh, Brent for sending all the various parts in this super cool car. I really just can't believe how well this was done too. It's just so seamless and uh, I think it's a really unique uh, addition to the collection. I can't wait to uh, run this thing behind the uh, Super Santa Fe locomotive. Once I get it uh, capable of handling the corners on this layout, it's going to be a terrific combo, I guarantee it. And I'd like to thank Ernest for the uh, rockin' new soldering iron. I'm really eager to test this thing out. I'm thinking of doing some DCC tutorials in the not-so-distant future, and something precise like this I think will be just the key for that, so huge thanks. And I'd like to thank Daryl for sending some of the locomotives and various parts. Those are certainly not going to go to waste. It's uh, always good having spares around. And I think the project locomotives are going to be uh, fun to work on as well. Many thanks to Controller Packers for sending the new station, the two well cars, and these really uh, just beautiful looking locomotives. I mean, these things are uh, just fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do too. I'm sure we can get this thing even better than it already is. And then finally, I just want to thank Scott for sending all the various posters, model railroading magazines, project locomotives, project pieces of rolling stock, vintage stuff. Um, it's just a massive box. Uh, I think it might be the largest one that's ever been sent into the channel. And uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there, so a huge thanks goes to Scott. Anyways, I think I'll finish off the video there. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone.